Lias at Rutgers University Psychology Department is also an advocate for kindness in schools. He says, as a citizen, grandparent, father, and professional, it is clear to me that the mission of schools must include teaching kindness. Without it, communities, families, schools, and classrooms become places of incivility where lasting learning is unlikely to take place. We need to be prepared to teach kindness because it can be delayed due to maltreatment early in life. It can be smothered under the weight of poverty and it can be derailed by victimization later in life. Kindness can be taught and it is a divine defining aspect of civilized human life. It belongs in every home, school, neighborhood, and society. So welcome to our broadcast today of the Art of Advocacy. And I guess maybe we could change the title to The Art of Kindness, because that's what we're going to be talking about. I think as parents of children with disabilities, so many times our kids are in positions of receiving help and waiting for help. And to me, that has that unintended consequence of having others sometimes judge our children by maybe they're not quite as equal because they are on the receiving end of help so much. And so instead of giving them too much help, how can we turn things around and for the month of December, empower our kids to do helping things for other people, help, help younger students in the school, help their neighbors out, help their family out, right? So our focus for December is all about scatter kindness. And it's a celebration that I hope you'll join. All you have to do is let me see if I can pull this word up. All you have to do is type the word kindness below and my IEP bot will get right over to you and sign you up when you get the message. Actually, you have to type the word kindness once again. It's one of those um, kind of Facebook rules <laughs> to make sure that you're really interested. But type the word kindness right here if you're watching live or if you're watching the replay. Um, I see we have a couple of people with us live, so cool. Go ahead and say hi so I can welcome you and show your comments up on our screen. If you don't know me, I'm Charmaine Tanner. I'm a parent, a retired teacher, author of the book, The Art of Advocacy, A Parent's Guide to a Collaborative IEP Process. And I also am a professional advocate and public speaker. So each Thursday, we're here live. Like I said, today's show is about scatter kindness. And when I was thinking about doing this for the month of December, I was reading different articles online, and it was like so interesting to learn more about the physical health <laughs> that can be increased and our health can be you know, so much better as far as lowering our blood pressure and things like that. When we, one, receive kind favors or acts of kindness, and when we give kindness, it's like amazing what that can do to not only your brain, your body, but just your soul and your spirit. So I wanted to start out with some facts that I've learned about um, giving and receiving kindness. And then we're going to be talking about our scatter kindness celebration. And see, um, in our advocacy toolbox, we have things to celebrate because <laughs> oftentimes as parents, we 
don't get enough good news from school to celebrate. So today is about celebration and kindness <laughs> and cattywamper <laughs> kinds of things that we have. But let's go and let me show you some of the things that I've learned about kindness. And let me take this off. So I loved this one. It says, kindness increases our sense of belonging, self-worth, and optimism. So think about it. Um, increases our sense of belonging. Because I know as a parent and an educator, and now that I'm also advocating is that it's like so important for our children to have that sense of belonging. So that's why I'm such a proponent of inclusion and making sure that our kids are with their friends in the general ed classroom. But being kind when our kids can do acts of kindness for others, and especially if you could have them do some things to their, you know, with their classmates in their classroom, it increases that feeling of self-worth. Our kids need to feel like they can give unto others. And that's what I'm hoping will be one of the outcomes for our Scatter Kind kindness <laughs> campaign. So let's look at another one here. This one says, one act of kindness in a crowded area can create a domino effect and, and improve the day of many people. So when I read this one, it, it reminded me of, um, you know, I'm sure you've heard where people drive up, you know, in the drive up line at Starbucks and they buy their coffee or whatever the person behind them is ordering. Um, and then the person drives up to the window and it's like, oh no, you know, your order's already been paid for. And it's like, what? So yeah, I'm going to pay for the person behind me. And it just has this chain reaction. So what I would love is for us to think of ways that we can start <laughs> our own um, Starbucks-like um, domino effect by not only having your child do one act of kindness a day, but yourself. So hopefully then through the workplace, through, you know, your neighborhood, things, people, you know, usually once they receive some kind of act of kindness, they are uplifted and they are looking for an opportunity to also be kind to others. So I would love for you to type in the comments your ideas for acts of kindness because each day in December, you'll be getting a message, but I don't have all of them formally written yet. So I would love to include some ideas that you have about what are some acts of kindness, either that you've done yourself or you've heard other people have done. And it would be awesome to, to share with our community. So be thinking of that and type that in the box. So here's the next one. It says, when you're kind, you produce more of that feel good chemical serotonin. So yes, it's like there's scientific proof <laughs> that it helps us when we engage in being more kind to others and we get that natural high from serotonin. So that is so cool too, because I think of um, as parents, it can be really daunting to be in there every day advocating for your child. And it can be discouraging at times. And so if we are feeling that way, if we turn that around and think of something that we can do to make somebody else smile in their life, it helps us. So I guess <laughs> maybe this is a little selfish, right? It's like, okay, I'm going to be kind to somebody else because it's going to help me. But the good thing is it's a win-win situation, right? The other person is engaged and happy and you change their day and you feel better about your day. So as parents, it's awesome when we show our 
kids and model for our kids how being kind is really helpful. So the next thing that I learned was this one, which I thought was pretty interesting. It says, kind people age slower. Hmm. Now, instead of maybe buying all those um, miracle creams, <laughs> we can do more kind things and we age slower. And, and this isn't just like fluff. I mean, these are like real science <laughs> research that have, that has been done. So then when I was putting these slides together, I thought, ah, oh, maybe we can, I, this is, this is not kind, <laughs> but it's my, my weird sense of humor. So I thought, what if we, um, looked at special ed directors and saw like, are they aging um, slowly? Are they a kind person? Um, and then, you know, look at ourselves. It's like, how kind are we? And so the not so funny part is when we go to IEP meetings, do we walk into that space with a sense of kindness? and collaboration and non-judgmental because if we do we are going to experience an IEP meeting that is much more positive and think of the amount of time that you spend in meetings at school each year and if we do that through kindness with an attitude of we're in this together it will help us physically, mentally, and spiritually. So let's try for the month of December. Anybody out there who has an IEP meeting, and I've got several <laughs> that I've got to attend, <sighs> is to kind of stop and exhale all the, the anger and the frustration that we're feeling and breathe in some of that kindness and positivity. So I'm going to try that. If you're going to try it, right, I'm willing to try in the comment box. So here is another thing. Let's see. I'm trying to see which one I'm on that I learned. It says kindness helps us connect with people and in turn increases happiness. So yes, that connection with people, that is the most important thing, right? I remember Judith Snow, who's a self-advocate from Canada, and she said that um, having no friends is really the, own dis the only disability that there is, no relationships no connections. That's what really is something that hinders people in our society, right? And that's the, the fear that I think many of us have for our own children is what connections are they going to have that are going to continue in their life? It's like I don't know if you've ever done that circle of friends um, exercise where <clears throat> you draw a small circle and put your child's name in it. And then you draw another concentric circle around that. And you put in the person, you know, the people that are most closely connected, like usually that's family people. And then, you know, you put another circle and you put some acquaintances that your child has or that you have, and you keep going outward, and then you start putting in the paid people in your child's life, like teachers and therapists and counselors and um, doctors, all that kind of people that are paid to be in your child's life. And what I'm hoping that you find is closest to your child that they have the most people there that they're connected with 
and the people that are paid to be in your child's life are important and we want them, but we don't want that to be an imbalance. We don't want to have so many people that are paid to be there because as your child grows, as your child leaves high school, they need to have those connections with friends and not just paid staff that are there to support them. So think about that. As we go through our Scatter the Kindness celebration in December, the connections that our kids make by doing acts of kindness are going to be very, very important in their life. So let's make sure that we stay connected that way. Now, another thing I learned when I was reading about kindness is when you are kind to another person, your brain's pleasure area lights up like you were the receiver, not the giver. Isn't that interesting? So, yeah, we talked earlier about how that your serotonin level increases when you're doing acts of kindness. But guess what? Not only does it increase, but it increases to the level like you were the one that received this act of kindness, even if you are the giver, right? I guess that's like where that saying comes from, you know, it's better to give than receive. Because when you give, not only does it up your serotonin level, but it also is at such a level that you feel like you were the receiver of the act of kindness. So wouldn't that be cool? That's what we want. Um, we want it to be a win for the people we give kindness to, and we want it to be a win for ourselves that we're feeling better about ourselves. So I love that. And let me see. I think I have one more interesting tidbit that I picked up. <laughs> that I will share with you. And it says, children don't learn kindness by thinking about it or talking about it. Kindness is best learned by feeling, by feeling it and replicating it. So think about that. Children don't learn kindness by thinking about it or talking about it. Kindness is learned when they feel it and then they can give it to others. I just love that. You know, and as much as teachers feel pressured with all the things that they have to teach and all the content standards that they have to meet, I'm not saying that we have to say, okay, boys and girls, today is Thursday, 1230. This is our kindness hour. No, it can be something that's embedded in the school day, just like it can be embedded in your home life. So what I'm hoping with our celebration of kindness or scatter kindness celebration in December is that you'll want to join and participate with us. All you have to do is write that word kindness in the box below, either if you're live with us or watching the replay, type in kindness and you will get a message on Facebook. You'll type kindness one more time and you'll be all signed up. And starting tomorrow morning, <laughs> you'll receive a Facebook message with two new ideas, an idea for your child to do, an idea for you to do as far as an act of kindness. And I would love for you to type in the comments, what ideas do you have for acts of kindness? I want to keep these simple, short and sweet for you. When I give you ideas, you might have some wonderful creative ideas that either you have done or that you heard about people doing. I would love for you to share those throughout the month of December so we can keep the momentum and the excitement going about the good things that we can do for each other. So I'm Charmaine Tanner. I hope that you'll join us in our Scatter Kindness celebration. And I also hope that 
December is one of those months that you can help your child feel better about themselves. You can feel better about the the wonderful advocacy job that you're doing. So until next Thursday at noon Mountain Time, take care and scatter kindness.